In this video, I'm going to take you step by step of putting together a landform that can mimic the highland type environment. We're going to mold it and erode it. Then we're going to colorize it with the intention of making it a playable world. Okay, to begin our highland scene, I have composed some images that I found on the internet of iconic highland features. Some of them are in different seasons to show, um, you know, when the seasons change, certain things turn a different color. Where in the growing season, they show their vibrance. But this one here, um, I mean, this is probably the most, at least from what I've seen, is, is the most amazing one big vast but these sort of these soldier mountains that just kind of watch the sunset uh, what's particularly interesting is this this area right here because just because it's close to the shot is this protrusion of rock it's actually there's flow lines around it but the flow lines are a bright green it's brighter than the prevailing kind of soil vegetation and in between the flow lines is this heath, this heather stuff, uh, the shrubbery uh, that grows up. So the water, and I did a little bit of research on he heather, and it likes well-drained soil. So it won't do well in areas where water would collect or flow too much. It would just be too much for it. So it kind of hugs the hillside outside the flow lines. That's how I interpret this anyway, because you can even see here how flow would come down by the road. And it's here on the on the side of the hill. Another feature that's evident is on here. You can see this is obviously a flow line and that's a bright green. I guess I'm presuming this is spring or summer. And then everywhere else, it's a deeper, it's a thicker vegetation, but it's a deeper green there. Down here in the flats, in the low areas, it can either be a lighter, paler, or a browner, darker. And that's kind of evident back over here as well. You can kind of see this, this dark stuff, or even up top. So that's going to serve as inspiration. We're not going to be operating on the scale of something like that, but maybe something like this, because uh, we're going to create a game world. And, but even this isn't super practical because it's all slope. There's just very little channels for where the creeks run. So we're going to kind of meld and, and mold something from all those, those ideas. Something more along the lines of this. So let's get to it. We're going to start with uh, two primitives and combine them. We're going to start with plates. And plates is one that has a really high baseline, so we're going to drop that to floor. Otherwise it would be hard to combine it with our next node, which is range. Yeah, we want range. See, range sits pretty low to the baseline. And if, if what we're going to do here is we're going to combine via max, which means it's going to take the higher values of both. It doesn't look realistic here because it's different textures, but this is just a primitive shape that we want to be interesting. I have seed values so that you can follow along. Range is... The seed is 117333. Three, three. Okay. Plates 105162. And there we go. Next we before we start eroding away, we want to build the terrain up and that's mainly if you look, there's nothing too spiky. It's these bulbous, kind of beefy mountains. You know, well-worn, ancient, heavy. So we want to be careful if 
to erode the rock for it to show off the features, we need there to be enough bulk there to handle that operation. So to do that, there's a couple things we're going to do. We're going to go to Aperture. And we're just going to leave it at stock, as you can tell what it did. It kind of, it, it goes over the terrain with these disks. And you can see them more if you turn iterations up. Um, and that just kind of expanded our terrain. And it's actually, the, the default method is expand. So from here, we're going to go to Shaper. It's another one that you can manipulate the shape. We're going to change the value from 0, which is neutral, to 10, which adds beefiness. You can see it right here, specifically. So that just gives there more material to be able to erode it away while still revealing a landform. So from Shaper, we're going to go to Fractal Terraces. This will be our first erosion. And that's just, it's going to put interest on the slopes, but it's also going to help us expose the terraces that show up even here. If you can see, this is kind of a shelf. It's well worn, but you can sort of see a horizontal line. This is perhaps a big one there, but right here you can kind of see, you'd almost be able to walk along the top of it the way that it butts out right there. We're going to enhance these values, change the spacing to 5, and intensity to 71. Okay, so that's well defined. Um, and that'll be reduced through more erosion. We're going to go to Shatter, which is a look dev erosion node. And that just sort of collapses and settles in our land's shape. Okay. Then we're going to go to Wizard. Just stock settings are fine there. Okay, we're going to change some things in here. Change the density to hard to re reduce the amount of the rock getting blown away by the erosion. Material to rocky. This is more of a subtle final step before we're ready to move forward. And one more deposits high. So that helps fill in some of the lower areas in a subtle way. Next, we're going to go to an FX node. So from here, we're going. This is going to be our hub. We're going to start uh, pairing off for data for how we're going to layer the colorization of this. One that we're going to use for rock is protrusion, and then we're going to go to flow. Then we're going to go to Arboreal. Oops. A R B. Okay. Uh, those are the main three that we're going to work off of. So for Arboreal, we want it to actually. So to, to go back to our example here, we want our. Our boreal is going to represent the shrubbery, the heather, uh, and it it needs the slopes near water, but not in the direct flow of water. That's the idea. So that's what we want to target. So we're going to go first thing flowing water to seek flowing water. We're going to change to shrubs and large. That's going to give us a lot. And then for our flow we can inhibit arboreal. So that reduced it. Let's, let's 
let's look at it from the Arboreal node. See that reduced it way down. And that's looking a little bit more more natural. Um, I'm, I am seeing it at lower altitudes, so we're going to bring the minimum altitude up until it starts. And probably minimum slope too. That's probably going to get us closer to what we want. And I think that's enough. Okay. Now we can't colorize this because the little square blobs. So I'm going to go to FX node. Actually, we need to come off of colorize. We're just going to use it as a texture layer here. We're going to blur this layer. That's a little bit too much. Um, so we're going to combine the original with the blurred and that gives us a half blur because we can't really reduce the stock blur, but we'll compare and see which one really works. Flow, we're actually going to want primary and secondary um, for, for all the effects that we're going to do. So let's see, did that blast too much away? I think so. So I'm going to take secondary rather than the main output, which is all three layers. We're going to go for secondary and inhibit that one. So that gave us more back. Okay, so for protrusion, we're going to turn up the power to 12. We're going to put clip min to 4%. And as what we're, we're doing is we're reducing the data. There's a lot of haze here, which is going to interfere with our layers. So we're just going to reduce uh, the low values with clip. And then we're going to shape her to 27. That's just going to brighten up everything. Now, we also want to reduce it by subtracting it from flow. So that cleans it up even more. And now we want to double this output so it's a bright, vivid, pronounced texture. I'm going to do that by going to an FX, which is just neutral, and then adding those together. So that gives us, actually, it needs to come off of here. Boop. Boop. And that's cleaned up. So that's just a protrusion. I might turn the shape, the shaper down just a little. Okay. So now we'll go with, we'll start with our sat maps. We'll come off of FX and I'll go to texture. And texture will be the hub for our sat maps, which is our color palettes for each of these layers. And I'm going to get one for rock. One for the, the normal ground color, green, a bright green, a dark green, and our heather color. So uh, for the ground, I have some values. Uh, let's start with the rock is Rocky 544. Okay, to add that, we need something to add it to. Let's go ahead and make these links. We need a, a normal ground color. That's going to be green, 258. And we're going to change to negative 54 bias. That's going to reduce the amount of this white highlight and give us more of a solid color. 
Okay, we have rock, we have our ground, we can combine these now. So we'll go off of the ground color and go up to rock and do a blend. And that way we can use our mask that would be prepared to show our rock through. Okay, so next we're going to do the flow grass, the bright green, and we're going to need green 75. Which is way too green but we can combine it 50 50 with our original green and that'll tone it down so so we took our bright green and our original green we just combine them 50 percent blend and then show that part again from our combine of our rock and our grass we go output to that output blend 100% and now we want our tertiary we can go with pro with the the main output because we're going to do things afterward um, yeah let's just go for that and that as you can see had we not muted the green it would look more like that so if you're looking for ex extreme colors you know go for it but I think this better represents what we want to do. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is these brown patches that are in the low flat areas. And what I'm going to use to represent that is the flow two and three. Our primary and secondary. So that's all of these areas that kind of settle down. Okay, um, our, our ground color or our, the, the lowland will be Rocky 118. Okay, and a bias of 34. That just gives it actually gives a lighter tone and a darker tone so we're almost getting a twofer so from where we're worked off of let's go to our low bottom area and then go to 100% blend and then use our data map to mask it and that gives us this dark stuff at the bottom Okay, so finally, um, our heather, and this is very close to what we're doing, but we're going to go with colorful zero. And then we're going to grab what we have prepared to mark that off. So with we'll adder skybox. So this is one interpretation of a Highlands world. In a later video, we're going to bring this into Unity. We're going to set up weather and vegetation and just bring it more to life. I hope this was helpful. Uh, do me a favor and like, subscribe to continue seeing more of this. And we'll see you in the next video.